I said to myself, the role was really waiting for that, not. It was back in 2021 when I was watching an episode of Shark Tank. A husband and wife couple had come up with, of all things, sliceable ketchup. They terrified the sharks with horror stories of ketchup causing soggy buns and sandwich catastrophes. These would now be a relic of the past. No longer would ketchup drip out of hot dogs and hamburgers. Emily and Cole Williams had found a way to dehydrate ketchup so that it could be sliced like cheese. They were now seeking $200,000 investment in return for where they were offering a 10% stake in their business, cleverly named Slice of Sauce. Only guest shark, former baseball star Alex Rodriguez, was willing to step up to the plate. All the others bailed, citing reasons such as the high price of $5.99 for eight slices, and that slice of sauce had not yet shown any revenue. A shark agreeing on the show to fund a project does not constitute a legal agreement. Negotiations take place after the show to iron out details, and it is not unusual for these to break down. This is just what happened with Slice of Sauce. The Williams, it seems, had sliced off more than they could chew. They had no manufacturing and distribution plans, and A-Rod withdrew the offer. The company's website soon disappeared, and people are still squirting ketchup out of those little packets onto their burgers and onto themselves. I had forgotten about this little slice of life until the prospect of sliceable ketchup was resuscitated by scientists at Iran's Islamic Azad University. Not sure what the stimulus was, since I doubt that Shark Tank is a hot program on Iranian television. The researcher's approach was not dehydration, but studying, as the title of their paper explains, the textural and rheological properties of sliceable ketchup. Well, rheology is the science that deals with the ability of matter to flow, something that in the case of sliceable ketchup is not desirable. One way to restrict flow is by adding thickening agents. Regular ketchup usually has tomato pulp, starch, carboxymethylcellulose, guar gum, or xanthan gum added to reduce flow, but for sliceable ketchup, the goal is to have no flow at all. The Iranian scientists attacked the problem by trying various combinations of gel and gum, xanthan gum, each made by fermenting glucose with a different species of bacteria, konjac manna from the konjac plant, and locust bean gum from the seeds of the carob tree. They found that adding a 1 to 3 ratio of xanthan gum and locust bean gum to ketchup gave the best results in terms of texture and rheology. When it came to cinuresis, a term I had to look up, the ideal was 50% xanthan and 50% gel and gum. The paper doesn't make clear if the researchers were successful in making sizable ketchup, a prospective product I think I can happily live without. But I do appreciate that I now know what cineresis is. It is the expulsion of a liquid from a gel, as we often witness upon opening a container of yogurt. The liquid whey floats on the surface of the solid yogurt. If I ever do see a slice of uh, sliceable ketchup, I will now know to check for the extent of cinerisis. And that for today is our Kappa Joe.